My name is Jeremy Walton, and this is the Canon R3 Roller Coaster Review. Let's go. The Canon R3, I've been waiting a couple months for this camera, and of course it gets shipped out and needs my signature as soon as I go out of town. But eventually, I signed for it and started to dive into the details. If you watch some of my videos, you know I've been shooting on Panasonic for a while. The camera filming me right now and still going strong is the GH5S, but it was time for an upgrade. There are a few reasons I went with this camera and with RF lenses, which involves another camera, all coming to future videos. For this video, I just wanted to take this camera out and explore. It really is the best way to get to know your camera. Oh, and doing this one thing really helps. Yeah, I was heading to Disneyland the day after I got the R3 and didn't want to waste the opportunity. This video includes three roller coasters and me exploring the Canon R3 features. I've been a manual guy for a long time, so it's interesting to experiment with some auto features. If you want to see some R3 footage and how it held up on the Incredicoaster, then sit down, buckle up, and hold on. The first ride I decided to go on based on wait time. Seriously, if you haven't heard about Disney's new Genie Plus Lightning Lane issues, I'll let you look up the drama. Is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Just so you know, I shot everything in 6K RAW, 23.98 frames per second, and uploaded to YouTube in 4K. With the 45 minute wait time, I had a while to contemplate what my settings should be. My lens of choice is the Canon RF 24-70 2.8. I went with everything manual except for autofocus at 24 millimeters. My shutter was double the frame rate, aperture at F8, and adjusted my VND to get proper exposure. How did all that go? Ugh. Actually, that was the only time it lost focus. Overall, I was happy with how well the autofocus kept up. Stabilization was also on. At least for now, you don't have any other option besides the lens and camera stabilization working together so it's either on or off. Not sure how I feel about that, but that's for another video. Let's see how the first part of this ride goes. What I want to point out in this clip that I'm sure you don't notice is how crazy the ride actually is. Knowing that I had the brilliant thought of giving the responsibility to someone with my iPhone 13 Pro Max to film me filming the ride in ProRes to show you how much myself and the camera was moving around. Roll that footage. Okay, pause it. Look at that framing and is that a finger? <sighs> I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. The one good thing is it really does make my point. If you watch my hands, they were moving all over the place. It was really hard to keep the camera still. Something you could do is have multiple points of contact to secure the camera to your body. But I had my hands out and surprisingly, or not so surprisingly, the footage came out pretty well. Would have been nice to have an unobstructed view, but even in the front, you have the locomotive, so leaning out the side was the best option. This wasn't a scientific IBIS test. If you want to see a more in-depth video, just leave a comment and let me know. Back to the roller coasters. After Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, we headed over to the Matterhorn bobsleds and forked over the money for the lightning lane because the lines were getting ridiculous. I did decide to make a couple changes for this ride. Shutter priority is the first, and why not use manual focus because that sounds like a good idea. If you've never been on this ride, it's old school. You feel like you got beat up afterwards. And I'll admit, this wasn't a good ride to experiment on. That's a lesson for you if you're doing YouTube videos. Do multiple tests just in case one doesn't work out. As for the ProRes footage, we got a foot. Awesome. Then a few gigs of bouncing around. We got the back of the sea and another hand. Ugh. As for my footage, it wasn't much better. The ride was throwing me all over and I was constantly having to switch sides to film out the mountain. And because it was so quick, it couldn't get proper exposure. Watch out for that water. All around, not the best footage. Let's move on. Before the main event, I needed a little break. I figured I'd grab something to eat, have a drink, spill that drink all over me, get a couple B-roll shots, then head to California Adventure. Now this is what you are waiting for, the Incredicoaster. For this ride, I knew what I wanted to do. The first thing was to sit in the front row, so I had a great view. And since we basically follow the track, I figured autofocus would work just fine. Instead of filming at 24 millimeters, I zoomed in to 35. That's mostly what I use with my Voigtlander lens, and we might as well keep testing the IBIS. I mean, shooting at 70 millimeters would have been ridiculous, but 35 should still be good. The Incredicoaster is mostly outside, so I also stuck with shutter priority. All that was left to do was strap the camera to my wrists, and in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! Okay. 
Okay, right about here is when I thought maybe this wasn't a good idea. Trying to hold the camera up while pulling some G's was a struggle. No joke, I had every muscle flex to keep the camera stable. Here's the rest of the footage uninterrupted and look for the loop. was a workout. I felt exhausted after the ride. It was the first time I really felt every little turn and dip. There were times I wasn't even able to see the screen, but I held strong. Watching the footage afterwards was exciting and it wasn't a shaky mess. The ride was smoother than the others, but it was tough to keep the camera in position. I know I was moving around, which is expected on a roller coaster. I was just surprised it came out as well as it did. Autofocus was good, exposure did way better than I would have been able to do manually. After the first two roller coasters, my expectations were low. After this, it was worth it. To sum it all up, here's a few of my final thoughts. Like I mentioned, this wasn't some technical review. I wanted to get this camera and go shoot something for people to see. I came from the GH5 and GH5S and doing everything manually from focus to exposure. I had one day to play with the R3 before heading off to Disneyland. Maybe that makes a difference if you're considering this camera. Maybe not. There are some, I don't want to call them issues, just differences in shooting to post-production that I will cover later. I plan on making a lot more videos with this camera and having a lot more fun doing it. This was a good time. Well, there you have it, the R3 roller coaster review. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button because there's definitely more in the way. Subscribe so you don't miss out. But until then, comment below and let me know what videos you'd like to see with the R3. Until then, it's a wrap. <laughs>